Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. We're glad to hear this Monday morning. I know you're getting ready for Christmas right around the corner. Let's start with our weather by Haney Technical Center. High today, 68 and low. Low tonight now is 38. So it'll be a nice cool tonight. And our water temperature is down to 60 degrees. We're going to do a pretty fast weather. Let's go and look at our, our tide chart. Well, our tide's 23rd of December. We're looking at a, at a tide, low tide 844 and a high tide of 916. So uh, some about to get in deep tides. There'll probably be a lot of fish in the next couple of days, but we will have some tides there. Let's go ahead and look at our, here's our, uh, let's look at our fishing game forecast. In case we don't have time at the end, Mark Coward, Edgewater Beach Realty, 832-6000. We're looking at our times at 4.05 a.m. to 6.05, and then 4.26 this afternoon to 6.26. Be a good time to get outdoors. All right, now, we're going to get set up. I've got a video coming up now. It's, uh, once a year, the kids do projects in outdoor ed, and I just get fascinated. I know I know y'all enjoy it. I hear back from y'all. So we're going to run this video. It's a pretty long video, and then at the end, we're going to go ahead and do uh, – uh, some Christmas carols, but most important thing at the end of the show today, now we're going to draw for our uh, Christmas giveaway, this rod and reel here by, by Shakespeare, and this uh, six and a half gallon uh, feeder, Moultrie feeder, top of the line, okay? So you, you stay tuned and we'll be right back. We're going to take a break and come back with our video, all right? Okay, folks, I'm in my first fear of class. Today is a project day, and we picked out a couple of projects out of each class. This, this is class is, my, like I say, first period, and they're hard to get awake, but most of them are awake now. So uh, one of the, uh, are y'all awake back here? Okay. One of the things we're going to do, uh, just pick out projects. Our first project up here, Caleb, go ahead and tell us uh, what you've been doing. What do you have? Now, what made you think about that idea? Oh, uh, your cardboard box full of arrows. <laughs> <laughs> We've been taking the arrows in a cardboard box. So you drill the holes in it, okay, and it's, it's pretty heavy. I was picking yeah. it up. Okay, now go ahead and uh, put the arrows in and show the folks what we're talking about. Okay, so we have five holes, and we have five targets out on the field, so that will work great. All right, excellent job, Caleb. Okay, our, our next one is Tiffany Bass. Okay, Tiffany, tell us what you've done. Um, my dad and I and my little brother uh, put together a stool for you. Um, we made the top out of oak, and then the legs are made out of cedar. Um, we put some bracing on them, and... Uh, we didn't want to sand it or anything because we wanted it to kind of have like the, the wood look to it. And um, But we did sand the top and the bottom of it, um, they are kind of chiseled out so it's kind of like pegs in there. And then we put screws in the top and we filled the holes in with sawdust and glue so that you can't see them and it's not like all ugly looking. And you've tested it out, right? It sits, mm -hmm. it sits well. And it sits, it sits fine. So. All right. That is a very good job, Tiffany. Thank you. Okay. Okay, our next one, Bowen McGuffin. Bowen's a big outdoorsman. Sometimes he's late for class. Isn't he late for class when he goes outdoors and comes in from a duck hunt? He's class makes a grief. <laughs> All right. Bowen, tell us what you have over here. Uh, I, made a box, I made a box trap, and it pretty much traps anything that goes back here and triggers this little little pin back there. Okay, so let's see. The show us how it's going to work. So let's say he walks in here. And he Boom. And he's done. Wow. So what do you think you can uh, catch in here, Bowen? Any, uh, anything that has four legs and likes to eat trash pretty much. <laughs> oh, okay. Show us how that's just got a little notch on it right there. Yes, sir. You line it up this little pencil mark on this little dial. 
you notch, it has a notch in there. Cut it out with the jigsaw, and then you put like you put peanut butter on the end of it and throw like some dog food or something back there, and they'll go in there and they'll hit it and he traps them. All right, do it one more time. Boom! You got him. All right, good job, Owen. All right, that's good. All right, our next one is sort of out of necessity. This is Jacob Harrison. Now, Jacob is sort of in charge of doing our TV and everything while we're getting roll call, and, and we never can find a remote control, could we, Jacob? No, oh, Chester's always losing them. <laughs> we are always losing them. Chester's five, six classes in here. So tell us what you did. Uh, I just got a cone, put some Velcro on it, put the Velcro on the remotes, just stick it, it stays. <laughs> and it's orange and big, so... Always find the cone. Coach Chester won't lose his remotes anymore. So now we're not going to have any more problems when we're losing our remote control. Now this is not an extensive. This is very, very useful though. We're really going to use this in the outdoor here. <laughs> Good job, Jacob. Thank you. Okay, last one in first period now. This is Jill Johnson. And uh, Jill, tell us what you put together. <laughs> well, I made a wind chime. And I went to my dad's machine shop and sawed off his old antlers and drilled a hole in them. I'm sure he liked that. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, <laughs> uh, then we took um, his bandsaw and cut um, this little arrow piece for metal for the antlers to bring against. And then we used real broad heads for that. Okay. And then up top, what do you do? you have outdoor head cut out? Or yeah, that's turn what around. Okay. All right, now we'll go ahead and wiggle out of the winds blowing and see how it sounds. <laughs> That is, that's cool. Good job, Jill. <laughs> okay, folks, we're in my second period of class, and we're going to pick out some of the better ones in the second period. This is really, really nice class. Okay. And Hunter Goodrow is the first yeah. one we're going to have up. Hunter, so tell us what you have, buddy. I made a wood duck nesting box. And what I did was I got a 1 by 10 12 foot piece of wood and I cut it down in different lengths and then I pretty much just put it together and I made a door to clean it out by cutting this and I nailed or I screwed in two screws to act as a hinge. That's okay. Much it. Okay. And it's for wood ducks to nest in, like a Deer Point Lake or wherever you want to put it. Alright, that's a very good job. Yeah. Very good job. Hunter was showing the class also, and he got he got his plans off the FWC website. Hunter, show the show the inside, what what you did here on the inside. I left notches so that when the ducks are ready to leave, they can climb up out. That's cool. All right, very good. Okay, our next presenter. I right, have. I right, go ahead. And, I want you, I'm gonna let y'all start introducing yourself. Tell everybody who you are. So. Uh, okay. What's your Patterson, um, class of 2014. I made these little. Boats for Coach Chester. What I did is I took two pieces of one by one wood and cut out this little shape, and then I put magnets, glued magnets on the inside and on the back, so he can have them on the board instead of having to draw the boats. And you just stick them up on the board. You can stick them up different ways, so you can just move them across like that. It makes it really easy to do demonstrations for boating safety. And we've always talked about when we do our safe boating unit, we're constantly having boats on the board. I've been drawing them all, so now. Like you said, I don't have to draw them anymore. What happens when they crash into each other? Will they come apart? No, they're fine. All right, very good. All right, good job, Seth. Thank you. Right. Our next presenter, this is uh, Michael Trubio. Michael, there's something unique here. Uh, Michael, tell us what you have. This is a rope mat. Um, just take some rope and... Uh, about 200 foot of rope, and you um, make a template with nails in it and stuff. You just keep on weaving it in and out of the nails, and uh, you uh, get it really tight like that. You start by a corner, and that's how you get a bunch of the weaves. You um, tighten it, that's how you get like five weaves in it. So. How long did it take you to do that, Michael? It took a couple of days on and off, just because it's pretty intricate, and if you mess up, you have to restart the whole thing. So that wasn't fun. But so did you mess up any? Yeah. <laughs> and 
Yeah, the, you have to take apart like the whole thing. Oh man. Yeah. So you learn something from doing that? You don't know how to do it now? Yeah. My dad's friend helped me with it, so. Very good. Good job, Michael. Okay, next. Reagan Hambrick. Reagan, show us what you have. Um, I made a lighthouse out of flowering pots that you just turn upside down and you stack them. And I painted them and then I got this light and my dad and I drilled holes into the flowering pots um, and put the light at the top. And then I've got a fishing pole here and an outdoor ed class of 2014. And a lot works. Yes, sir. Very good. Excellent job, buddy. All right, folks, I'm out here now with my third period of class. This is, okay, this is a, a very good class. Okay, they're always happy and smiling. And uh, the project, the well, first one we're going to do third period, this is Shannon Hicks. And Shannon, I want you to tell the folks about your project and what we have here. Okay, so this is a sawhorse, and its purpose is to, like, set sheets of plywood on so you could work, have, like, a station, or you could use it as a table if you really want to. And it can hold up to 300 sheets of plywood without breaking. So, wow. And the way I made it is it's made out of two, two Okay. Pieces. And then these slide together like that. How cool. So. And that's really solid too, folks. We were checking it out earlier. They did it in school colors. What do y'all think about that class? <laughs> Good job. Now, Shannon, your dad help you a little bit on this? Yes, we Watch went you. to my next door neighbor's house and used his big saw machine. And, and then what? we used a jigsaw to take out the smaller sections. Okay. Now, I've had Shannon's two older brothers in class. Now, what's your, what's your uh, dad's name? Alan Hicks. Alan Hicks, okay. And then I my see. brothers are Mark and Sean. Okay, good folks. All right. All right, next project now, Lexi Mowat. Listen, this is a cool one. Tell us about this. Um, this is the catapult that I made. It's made out of PVC pipe um, and like twine and electrical tape and like a medical tubing that we tripled up to make it super tense so it would shoot. So. Okay, so it's now it's not gonna break anything. So you got a metal, you got a tube in here, right? Yes. Now what do you have? What are we gonna shoot today? Um, I think it's a lemon. Yeah, actually we grew this lime, folks. Uh, we we grew a little lime tree. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it stuck. <laughs> well, it may not shoot well if it's stuck. Okay. Okay, we're gonna. You ready? One, two. Boom! And there it goes. Good job. <laughs> All right. Very good. Okay, Dad, show us what you have real quick. I have a PVC pipe uh, recurve bow that I made. Tell us how you made that. Uh, how, how did you get it to bend like that, the PVC? With a glorified hair dryer. <laughs> Can't really know what, I don't really know what they're called, but uh, it's for using uh, for electrical wires to shrink it. You can heat up the tubing, fold it, bend it, warp it, and I made a bow out of it, put a string on it. Just curl the ends, cut the tips. Okay, we're gonna get an arrow and try it out in a minute, okay? Okay. All right. All right, we got set up. We're gonna try this bow out and see how it works. We got an arrow now, and uh, we're, we're not at a long distance. We just want to see if we get a little bit of tension. All right, Dallas, go ahead and uh, take your time. See if it, boom, it does hit a target. Good job on a handmade bow. Very good. All right, this is my fifth period class. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, Daniel Johnson, show us what you got here, Daniel. I made a custom smoker. Me and my dad did. And there's a charcoal basket. It's not in there. I gotta make it. It's not done yet. But okay. the shells here. Uh, there's racks that go in here for you to meat on. Put wood in the basket and you use these flaps down here on the side. Control the air to your fire. Control the oxygen. Okay. This is Outdoor Ed Class 2014. It's got the custom kangaroo on the bottom of it. That's my dad's trademark. And it's got these light handles. You buy them at a place in Dothan. There's another. This right here, your thermometer goes in here. To tell how hot your fire is. And here's your stack. You can put this can in to keep the rainwater from getting in it. So y'all made that, huh? Yes, sir. That's a good job there, Daniel. It's got handles on the side of it. A handle to carry it. What do y'all think about that class? Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, these stickers will stay on here. 
Those stickers will get up to 600 degrees without melting off. Oh, they will? Yeah. 600 degrees. Me and my dad tested it out to see how hot we could get them. <laughs> well, that's cool, Daniel. Good job there, buddy. Okay, now we're up here with Sonny Curdy. Sonny, yeah. this is really good. I want you to tell us what you did here. Um, this is like a deer scene, or a scene in the woods. This is the beater in the shooting house. Okay, dear. Now, what we got to do, folks, this is, uh, she actually made this. Okay, let's start down here with the actual feeder. What, that feeder, what's it, what was it? Um, this is just a pill bottle, and I painted it. And this is um, a pole my dad got from work. It's like wire piping. And All right, let's look at that pole right there. You, you said your dad's an electrician? Yes, sir. So he actually, I mean, he got the, we got the actual cable. We got a little box down here. Check that out. That is very authentic. All right, what else? Uh, the shooting house is made out of popsicle sticks with camo duct tape around it. Popsicle sticks with uh, camo tape around it. Now, what's inside? Uh, there's a little man. The, house, the roof opens. The roof's open? Let's look inside. You actually have a hunter. First thing I noticed, he had his hunter safety orange on. Mm. Very, I'm very impressed. All right. Good job. So that's an excellent job there. Thank you. Yay. All right, next project we're going to show is this Trent Miller. Trent, tell us about this one. This is my co hanger. This is a buck I killed in South Georgia a few years ago. This is a broomstick that I shoved into the skull and put glue on, and it's on a Christmas tree stand. You got the old Christmas tree stand, so that's pretty steady there. And how'd you get it secure down here? I put or uh, some kind of sealant in it and super glue. That's a nice book. And I also screwed in that screw. Yeah, the screwed in down there. Screw thing. What part of Georgia get that book in? Sparta. Okay. Good job, Trent. Okay, and the last one, Austin, go ahead and bring yours up here. Austin Gibbons. Out of the way, got a big trap here. All right, Austin, tell us about it. Uh, made myself a rabbit trap uh, out of some wood and some uh, some metal fences. And what you do, you uh, lift the door up here and put a horseshoe staple in the wood and got a little thin piece of metal pole and set it right there. Put the food behind this, uh, make this one right here. And the rabbit goes in, hits the pole. Him in. Boom! Then he can't get out because there's a block right here. He'd be pushing. You got him trapped. Good job, Austin. All right. All right, go ahead. Very good. This is our second period on the Christmas party day. And we're going to sing. Everybody's having a good time. So, Banton. All right, let's lead. You lead a band prize. Oh, that's it, good Folks, this is my third period of class. They're all excited right before we get out for Christmas, and they're happy. <laughs> and, they and they have volunteered to sing a Christmas carol for you. Yeah, you okay, so uh, I appreciate you volunteering. All right, ready? One, two, three. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen, but do you
folks, this is my fourth period of class. It's always a happy class, they're always smiling and always glad to be here. And they're going to sing you a Christmas carol. We're going to start off Ty. Ty's the most Santa Claus looking person in here. So <laughs> he's going to start it off for us. Okay, Ty? One, two, one, two, three, four. Merry watch out. You better not cry. You better not cry. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. <laughs> Folks, hope you really enjoy that. I got a kick out of it. Now, tomorrow's show will be Captain Ken Paramore. Let's get ready for our drawing. The first thing we're giving away is this really nice Shakespeare rod and reel for Christmas. And a winner, we're going to try to find somebody right down here. And a winner of that is Arisha Dutton. Arisha Dutton, you have won that. And now let's go to this motor feeder with a program with timer and all kind of neat stuff on it. And the winner of that is going to be... Uh, I, I dropped it. Let's go back right here. This is uh, Sheila Wyndham, Panama City. That's a winner. Folks, you have a great day. Do something good for somebody. God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours. <laughs>